The Gladiator Next is a joystick that many call one of the best in the mid-range for flights and peripheral market, and for good reason too. The Next, as I will call it from now on, was made by VKB, which is a Russian company designing a wide variety of flights and peripherals, like grips, bases, rudder pedals, and much more. This is their answer to the mid-range market that many major product manufacturers tend to dominate in currently, and is quite a hidden gem if you manage to figure out its existence and purchase one for yourself. I'm going to go over what I liked and disliked about this joystick from my 3 months of using it for various flight simulation titles. A quick disclaimer is that I am reviewing the Gladiator Next Premium Rite, which is one of the 4 options available on the VKB website for purchase. The Gladiator Next comes in at a price of $120 US dollars for the standard variant and $150 US dollars for the premium variant plus shipping and any relevant taxes applicable to your country. Without further ado, let's get into this review. One of the first things I found that I really liked about the Gladiator Next was the ergonomics of the grip. The grip is from VKB's gunfighter lineup called the Cosmos Sema, if I have pronounced that correct, which is their space combat oriented grip. The only difference is that the base is different from the gunfighter as the gladiator uses its own base rather than the gunfighter base. The overall shape of the grip was excellent, it felt comfortable to hold for hours on end for long simming sessions. I even found myself sometimes just wanting to grip it because of just how felt nice it felt in my hand. It was just really that great. The button placement on the grip is excellent as everything is reachable for me easily, though I do have some decently large hands. But smaller hands will be perfectly fine in handling the grip and reaching all the buttons without much issue. The number of buttons you get with the joystick is also great as you get with it, at least with the premium edition, two 5 way hats, a mini stick, which you can also change from analog to digital in one press which provides a total of 2 axes and 8 way POV hat. It also comes with a wide assortment of buttons and encoders on both the stick and the base. The travel of what is known as the gimbal, which is the device that sits inside of the base to allow movement of the grip, is super smooth and overall excellent. It is one of the only few if not the only joystick on the market that has almost no oscillation when you let go from one of the far axes of the X and Y travel. This has been done by using a good amount of dampening grease, which allows for such smooth travel, which is more akin to an aircraft than it oscillating back and forth constantly you'll be able to smoothly move the stick around easily without much issue. This also makes it so that the stick when moved around with your hand feels heavy as if it was more akin to an aircraft's control rather than feeling like a toy. The joystick itself features 16-bit Mars sensors which are sensors that VKB have designed to provide the utmost accuracy when moving your controller, the same sensors that are used in their gunfighter lineup. If you buy the premium edition of the joystick, it comes with a wide variety of extras to customize the joystick to your liking. The premium edition comes with two different spring strength sets, spare springs for the default springs that come pre-installed on the stick, a tool to remove the springs, a push button module, hat switch module, and trigger cover if you wanted to customize your premium Cosmosema grip to be more like a standard than a premium, and it also comes with an extra high palm support. This allows you to customize the experience to your liking and swap things out that you do not need or want to swap out for ease of use. Most of the time, companies do not allow for something like this in their products as most are just shipped the way they are but with the Gladiator Next it is easy to modify the stick as it is only some basic knowledge that you need and basic tools to adjust it to your liking. The Gladiator Next is one of the few joysticks available on the market that can be ordered in a left or right handed variant. Many higher end options in terms of grips have this option like the VKB Gunfighter with the Cosmosema or Verpal Constellation Alpha Grip with Verpal Warbird or Mongoose Base, with the only mid range option being the T16000M. This stick however has the advantage of not being as pricey as the other options while still maintaining the ability to order a left or right handed variant of this stick. This makes it perfect for HOSAS or hands on stick and stick users as this allows for finer control in space sims, making it one of the best options for a user looking for a more budget oriented option for HOSAS while still maintaining a high quality in the purchase of their joystick. 
You can even save a bit on cost by ordering a premium right-handed gladiator next and then supplementing the left side with a standard left-handed gladiator next, saving you about 30 US dollars. The VKB Gladiator Next gets access to VKB's Dev CFG program, which allows for a wide range of customization. With this program, you can quite literally set up anything you can think of that you would want to do with your joystick. Whether that be shift mode keys or axis trimmers, whatever you can think of, it can probably be done in the software. The software also allows you to update the firmware of your joystick, ensuring your joystick is up to date with the latest features and fixes. It also allows for precise calibration of all axes available on the joystick, meaning they should work to the utmost accuracy as mentioned previously on the second Pro. Overall, the software is excellent in how in-depth you can go with it, and it is definitely something you're not going to get with something like Thrustmaster or Logitech's joystick options. The next is planned to have extension modules be available known as SEM, THQ, and many other different extensions, which I'll put pictures of on the screen. These modules can be attached to your next to provide even more controls and features, such as a throttle quadrant, autopilot panel, more buttons, axes, and much more. This allows you to even further customize your stick as you can put whatever modules you want onto your next to make it more precise to what you want to be doing, whether that is flight simulation, combat simulation, or space simulation. These will be sold separately by VKB and can be attached to each other to create one cohesive unit or can be plugged in separately if you desire that instead. The build quality on the next is superb and overall excellent. It is made from a majority ABS plastic which is durable and feels great when you put it in your hand. The base plate that comes with the joystick is metal, which provides a bit more weight at the bottom of the stick to keep it planted on your desk. It looks sturdy and solid, and from previous experiences of owners of the older Gladiator K and Gladiator Mark II, those are still holding up really well, and with the next, I don't see it being any different as it looks like it would be able to stand the test of time, giving you a longer lasting product with constant support from the VKB team even after your warranty expires if parts are still available. However, after the warranty expires, you will be required to pay for the parts that need replacement. No product, however, is going to be perfect, and the next does have some issues that I didn't like about it. The first con I must mention is that if you're ordering from North America or anywhere else that isn't in Europe, the shipping can get quite expensive. From what I've seen and experienced with my time ordering from VKB, controllers.com, most of the time when you order from North America, you are getting it shipped straight from China, which can cost upwards of $50 US or more, and does not include the potential import charges you might face in Canada for example, where I am located. This isn't normally an issue, but sometimes it can get your hopes up when you're buying a decently priced joystick at just 150 US, however it ends up costing a lot more once you finally get it in your hands. This is a small con and is to be expected. This is just more of a warning when you're trying to purchase this joystick for yourself. Most of the time, companies just include the price of shipping it to you and the cost of the product, but with those methods, at least you know how much you are paying from the get-go. Europeans do not need to worry about any import charges if bought through the VKB Europe website, as you are only charged for the joystick, VAT, and shipping. Just a warning if you plan on getting this joystick. Another complaint I have with the joystick is that the software, while powerful, can be quite confusing on how it works and what each option does. It has a very large learning curve to get it to do what you want it to do. This can present issues if you're trying to have the joystick do something specific like picking a button a virtual axis and leave you stumped as you try to figure out what to do. However, the good thing here is that if you contact VKB or post on the subreddit r slash hotas, there are many people, even vendors selling VKB products that can assist you in getting what you want done so that you can go and get learning with that software and get yourself to become an expert on it. There are also a wide variety of tutorials on the VKB YouTube channel which will help you in figuring out how to use the software. I found myself sometimes accidentally lifting the base when using the next. If I was in the thick of some action in IL-2 Great Battles, for example, I may sometimes overextend and lift the entire base by mistake, which is surprisingly one of the issues I did not actually experience with the X56 Hotas. 
This is a minor issue and is easily corrected by either using less force in general or mounting the joystick. It is something to note however, as it can sometimes throw you off while you're in a dogfight or doing some action in a space sim of any kind. A minor issue however, I find myself wishing that the base was just a bit heavier with some more weight to keep the joystick planted firmly on my desk. One of the other aspects I particularly didn't like about the next was the throttle and how it was placed. I personally find it uncomfortable to use as it isn't like the throttles you find on the T16000M in Extreme 3D Pro where the throttle is placed on a sloped angle, whereas this one is placed on a vertical section of the base, making it a bit more awkward for me to use. You can get used to this, but I still find it very strange to use. The best way to use the throttle I found was to push the throttle up using the top of your thumb on the bottom of the extrusion on the throttle and vice versa when decreasing throttle. I would have much rather preferred to see something like the throttle that was available on the Gladiator K and Gladiator Mark II, which had the throttle placement on the left side of the base, on a more horizontal plane. The Gladiator Next is one hell of a joystick from my experience using it. It provides a great amount of accuracy and quality at a price point that is significantly lower than the starting price for, the, for a gunfighter base of a Warbird base from Verpal. You get excellent quality and controllability with this joystick compared to anything within its price bracket at the expense of a dedicated throttle unit, making it not so much of a hotas and more of just a joystick. Overall, one of the best combinations you can make with this joystick is the addition of a TWCS throttle alongside it, which can per be purchased separately and used with the next, allowing for a full hotas experience. For those of you looking for a cheaper HOSAS option, the Gladiator Next on the right paired with the T16000M on the left can also be done as a cheaper alternative to a Next on the left. Overall, this is my recommended joystick for anyone looking for something that is more reasonably priced than the higher end options yet getting you that quality you would expect at $150. US this will conclude this video. Thank you all for watching this video. If you found it helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like. As always, please feel free to comment down below about any concerns you might have and I'd be glad to address them. Subscribe if you want to see more hardware reviews and flight simulation related content. This has been a VK Northern video and I hope to see you all in the next one.